Hello and welcome to Path to Programming. Today we're going to talk about refactoring. So this little presentation I put together and we're also going to be doing a, a demo as well. So this book here on the right is from Martin Fowler. Um, this is one of the first programming books I, that I ever got. Um, in the beginning, it didn't make a lot of sense, um, and I've been reading it more and more lately, and it's uh, starting to click. But uh, basically, this book has a lot of different, um, as a catalog of different refactorings and code smells on ways that you can improve the design of your code. So uh, a lot of the ideas that we're going to talk about today comes from this book. So. Uh, what is refactoring? Well, Martin Fowler has two definitions, uh, one being a noun, and that is a change made to the internal structure of software to make it easier to understand and cheaper to modify without changing its observable behavior. And then we can also use it as a verb. We say to restructure software by applying a series of refactorings without changing its observable observable behavior. So when I talk about a type of refactoring using as a noun and then the act of refactoring of um, enhancing the design of your code. So I like to think of refactoring as like remodeling your bedroom. So there's a few things you can do that that is going to be like refactoring and uh, you can reorganize the furniture around your room and you can paint the walls you can add picture frames all of that isn't really changing the intended behavior of your room but if you were to add like a dimmer switch and and replace your normal light switch then that is you know almost like introducing a new uh behavior, um, much like adding a new feature into code base, uh, it's adding a new feature into your room. So today we'll be going through a tennis refactoring kata, and I have the rules up here. Um, if you want to pause it and check it out, um, it's basically taking points and converting it to the kinds of scores that you keep in tennis. So this kata was designed by Emily Bach. Um, her book is here, the Coding Dojo Handbook. Uh, this has a lot of different, um, different kind of katas in it. And she's a great technical coach that I've been learning from. So kata is from a uh, word from Japan and something that uh, you practice in martial arts. And it's small movements um, that you can, you know, get your body accustomed to, and they're simple. And so these coding exercises are simple and program our mind to get in tune with these habits of these technical practices, like refactoring and TTD. So we'll be practicing identifying code smells and applying refactorings today. And I like this quote from Bruce Lee, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And so when we work on these katas, we can do the same one over and over. A lot of people end up like having their favorites that they, they do frequently. And um, this one's definitely grown to be one of my favorites. So today um, we'll be, when we're refactoring, we'll want to follow the rules of simple design. These rules are from Kent Beck. So first one is passes the test. Second one's get rid of duplication. Third one's improve the names, make things clearer. And the last one is make things smaller. Make your methods smaller, make your classes smaller. Code smells are what we can look for to 
get an idea of what's your factor. Um, so a code smell is a signal that the design of your code could be improved. It doesn't always mean that it needs to be or you want to do it right away, but it's just a signal. So here are some of the ones that we're going to look at today um, and just some common ones. Uh, so long method, heavy indention, temporary field, primitive obsession, feature envy, and duplicated switch statements. So we will look at all of that. And there's a more exhaustive list here. So as we refactor, we want to do it safely. We want to always be in a state to where we can stop and ship the code. So we always want to have the project working. We never want to be in the state where we are, have been refactoring for like two weeks and the code's been broken for you know such a long time. We don't want the code to break at all. We're gonna follow some rules to make sure that we refactor safely. So first, we're gonna think. We're gonna identify, and we're gonna analyze. So we're gonna think about what's the simple things to do first, and we'll gradually get to the more complex stuff. We'll identify those more simple things, we'll identify code smells, and we'll analyze you know, how we're gonna go about doing that. Um, so also we have a suite of tests. Um, it is virtually impossible to refactor without a good suite of tests. Every move we make, we'll be running the test to verify that the system still works. And we'll also be making use of the IDE as much as possible. Most IDEs today have refactoring menus and it saves you a lot of time and it also saves you from errors. It's also good to commit often, especially when you're about to do manual design changes. So we'll be doing commits in stages as well. So there's going to be situations today where the ID is not going to be able to help us and we'll have to do this manually. Some of those situations are substitute algorithm. That is a refactoring where you take something and basically rewrite it. There's a safe way to do this. And uh, credit to JB Rainsberger for teaching me this way. So first we add the new thing. So we add a new method or whatever it is, a new class. And then we make all the clients of that call the new thing. And then we remove the old thing. And then also we're going to look at unroll for loop. And we'll also be replacing conditionals with polymorphism. Okay. Let's jump into it. Okay, so for the first thing we do, we'll just look at the code. Um, we can bring up the test here. Let's look at these tests. All right, so here are our tests. We basically have every scenario covered here. And so we know that we can safely refactor. Okay, so let's start off with running those tests. Okay, they're all passed. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to, let's actually make notes of this. We're gonna go get the low hanging fruit. So this just means find the easy stuff. So that's going to include renaming fields, renaming methods, extracting methods, or removing temporary variables. Uh, let's actually just get a survey first of all the code smells. Um, so if we look at this method, one point, this is how we assign the points to each player. So we won't be looking at that too much. So I'm just going to close this for now. And we're we'll really just focus on this one method here, get score. So first refactoring I'm going to do, I'm just going to auto format. And that makes things a little bit clearer. So some of those um, code smells that we talked about. So we have heavy indention. So if you go down here, you can see us start to get more to the right. So you have indention, we definitely have a big method. Uh, it's about fi almost 50 lines of code here. And 
definitely have some primitive session going on with the score here. So we'll tackle that as we go. So let's actually start with the score. So we'll name this player one score instead of M score one. Okay, and we're on the test. Now that was an automated refactoring, but just to be safe, um, I won't be running it every time because I do trust the ID. So let's keep going. So simple thing to do here is actually just to go into each one of these and just extract this into a method. So in this situation, we're checking if the scores are identical. So I'll call this uh, determine draw result. Okay. And the next one, uh, this one looks like it's advantage or win. So we'll say, determine or advantage or one result. And then we have this one here. This is just like an ongoing score. So let's actually try to get rid of this right here. To, let's try to change the signature right here. So just hit control T, which is your factory this menu. You can also get that right up here. So I just want to go factor this, change the signature. I'm going to remove this. Okay, those are still passing. Okay, the temp is no longer used. Let's remove that. So you can fix this right now, but just instead of assigning score and returning it, you can actually just get rid of this temporary variable by just returning right away. And we can remove that. Run the test. Everything's passing. We can get rid of this temporary variable. Okay, so we good way to get rid of temporary variables is to extract the method and then to return it early. Okay, so one thing we can do is just add some braces around these. Okay, and now we can do the same thing and just return right away. Run the test. Get rid of the unnecessary variable. Everything's good here. Okay, this is better than it was before. Let's go to the draw. Looks like we have a similar situation here. So let's return straight away. Can get rid of the brakes. Great. All right, so low hanging fruit, rename some fields, rename methods, extracted methods, or remove temp variables. So, uh, there's some temporary variables here, but we will tackle that in the next video.